Yo, what is good, YouTube? It has been a minute. I have been slacking on the video game recently. I've been doing a bunch of like touring and shows. I've been working on an album, which is now in the very final stages and has also cleared up some time slash creative energy to be able to make some more YouTube videos again. I kind of want to go through and talk about some things that I've learned through this album. I've been doing a lot more like guitar based, rock based music recently, and I've been doing a lot of different workflow ideas, a lot of different processes on trying to figure out the best way to track guitar and bass and the most consistent and fast way for me. And I want to kind of go through my method. I've been, I think that this is, this is like a hybrid setup of like, I use a lot of analog gear, but I also do route it into my DAW and I'm using some plugins as well. So the main, right now I'm recording with my Strat. I'll go through that and I'll probably show bass as well after this. Pedal board cam, AKA my iPhone. I am recording through my amp head into Logic with a, a cab sim and a pedal board. I'm just gonna show this here. Uh, let's see, the camera kind of crops weird when I switch it, so it might be, there we go. So yeah, this is the gist of my setup. You got my guitars here and around, but I'm running through this Marshall amp head and my Roland JC 55. I have two mics on my Roland when I'm tracking that, but my amp head, I don't have a cab. So I'm just recording that straight in. And the way that works is let's see, I'll go back to my screen here within console on UAD. I on the UAD console app, I have an insert. So I'm plugging my, the back of my amp. This is a solid state amp. So I'm able to just plug it directly into my interface and I'm running it through this amp plugin. I've turned the amp off and I'm only using the cab. I'm using this one specifically because it has the Marshall 1960 cab with the greenbacks that I want to use. I feel like that would be like the most like matched set of the Marshall amp that I'm using. It's kind of like a JCM 800 adjacent thing, but yeah, I'm running it through here so I could get the sound of the amp, sound of the cab. Let's see here, I'm gonna set a new track and start playing a little bit for you and then show you more. I'll do two things. I'll make an input of the amp and I'm gonna go back to pedal board cam here to show you a little bit more. I have a cable going out the back of the amp into my DAW. And I also have my pedal board down here so I can show it right. And at the very end on the top left where this Altoids box is, is a DI box. And I'm using that as, is kind of like an amp splitter at the very beginning. So I have, if you see the like um, tweed cable here, that's what I'm plugged into with my guitar. So that is directly what I plug into. I have my guitar goes into the DI, which then goes through my whole pedal board and into the amp that I choose. I also have going out the side, this XLR of a parallel clean DI. So that is just the DI, like just, just the guitar going straight into my DAW with zero effects. And I'll plug that in in Logic as well and kind of explain that. So the reason I do that is it prints two things at the same time for me. It gets me exactly the guitar tone that I've worked with and then no, no processing at all. And that's helpful for a couple reasons. The first reason is that if I'm recording like a distorted guitar riff, a lot of times the waveform gets very blocky. There's no transients. So editing it is kind of a nightmare. But if I record a parallel DI, I can link them together and I can quantize the DI and then the distorted amp track will follow it. And then another reason is if I want to reamp, I um, can always either double it with a different tone. I can then send it back and track that DI through a different tone on my amp if I ever want to go back. But it just gives me the option there. So and I'll start playing a little bit. So this is my amp, you spell amp correctly. And this is my DI. So if we play the DI. We can hear that it's just totally a clean signal. But with the amp.
Now that is the amp with no plugins or anything. So I'm gonna go back to the, the pedal board cam here. And what's nice about it is like hearing the cab and hearing everything through this, I can like very quickly AB with my headphones, totally like isolated and figure out the best tone to use. So I can like try like, all right, here's just my amp gain crank. If I want to go blues driver in front of it, can go HM cool. But anyways, yeah, um, gives me options. It lets me quickly go through and mess with the tones. I kind of never really tweak the settings. Maybe a little bit if I switch guitars from like a humbucker to a single coil or something. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a good high gain tone and a good clean tone and I'll just swap between those and use pedals to blend and like get it to where I want. I like it because especially with the single coil, you get like a crunchy, it can get heavy in a mix. I can then really get crazy and aggressive. But um, I'll just track a, I'll track like a little riff here to kind of show how I would go about managing the amp and the DI. And then talking about this transitions to the second half of the video processing I might do within the DAW after I've printed everything. So it's it's nice having these all these pedals and my amp set up. A lot of times the tone itself is there when I record. I find myself not doing too much mixing with my guitars. A lot of times I just leave them right as is, but I get the chance to like glue and kind of de harsh and do things like that within the DAW. So I'll just track like a little chordy thing. So what I'll do then is I'll record both the amp and the DI at the same time. Usually I'll mute the DI, that way it's not changing how I hear, but typically I'll double track by more often than not, hard left and hard right. So I'm gonna take uh, new tracks. I duplicated with Command D to get the same exact tracks here. And I'm gonna record a second time through. And then You can hear how the wines, the left and right really like makes it feel full and like the slight differences of the left and right take really do a lot. I know double tracking isn't the most new concept, but I figured I'd include that in here. Next, what I'll do is I highlight them all and create a summing stack. I normally do the summing stack. That way I can put effects directly on it. Trim this up, cut off the ends. That way it loops. I'm going to fade in and fade out. I also noticed I I normally record with less latency, but I had to put on 1024 buffer size because of recording this video. So the guitar playing did come in a little bit late. So this might be a good time to show some of the quantizing that I would do. So like I said, the as you can tell, like the waveform for the distorted part is pretty much just like a square wave there's not transients to grab like there is on the di to say like oh here i am a little bit earlier a little bit late so what i will do is i go to my mixer channel here 
I have my group section and each each pair of guitar amp and DI will make I'll make its own group. So this will be group one. This will be group two. And then we can see the group settings here. I make sure now you can choose any of these things. If you check mark it, it will control both in the group. What is most important is this editing quantize lock. So I'll make sure this is turned on. And then what happens is if I click on my DI tracks and editing, see it grabs all the transients from here and, and now the, this track will follow. And I'll do the same for the for these two. But yeah, I will do that to then quantize it tighter if I need to. I don't always. I will. I'll say that I'm only usually depending on genre. I'm only quantizing if something is off or if I'm doing like a metal song that is like needing to be surgically tight. But I don't do that type of riffing that much anyways. But this is just like a plus of recording this way is you have access to this or I can decide, oh, I don't want that guitar tone, then I can go on this DI. I can open up one of my amps and put, say, I don't know, a rocker verb on it. And then you have options there. So it really helps you if you find you've mixed yourself into a hole with the initial guitar tone. Then from there, usually it depends per the track, but I'll do some like cutting EQ. I will go to, usually my go-to for this is Pro Q3. And a lot of times in like a guitar tone around 4K gets really harsh. Like that type of noise. But with Pro Q3, you can point out the exact resonant frequencies and like cut them out. Now I'm not just mixing with my eyes, I'm seeing what it grabs. And then... So you can even hear there, it's kind of really softened that. And like I said, you don't want to mix with your eyes. So I will use that to see like what the EQ is telling me are the harsh frequencies, but then I'll like listen to see if I really want that out or not. Also, I usually don't, I'm doing this as if I'm making like guitar loops, but I normally don't do the surgical guitar mixing until I'm working on the full mix because guitar is a very mid rangey con contextual kind of instrument. <laughs> I know that was a big one. You can hear the difference. Same with that. That, not so much. I might just do a wider soft cut. Similar to the Pro Q3 that I'm doing, I might go and do a little bit of soothing. I only... This is another thing that's very easy to overdo, so I'd be careful with it, but catching that 4K-ish. It's a good way to kind of catch a little bit of the harshness that you that is more specific than just a couple frequencies. I find the default setting, honestly, is pretty geared towards guitar. I think that 4K is just a problem spot for most sounds. And um, Soothe is also very commonly used on guitar, so that makes sense that the default is helpful for it. Now you can hear where it starts to take out some of the actual tone versus where it's just the resonance. So in no, with no context, that kind of feels like the sweet spot for me. But I might find when I add bass, drums, guitar, etc., that I've overdone it. And then I might f sometimes find myself removing these plugins. So before. So 
then after that, I'll usually do a little bit of bus compression. I find myself doing more compression on clean guitars and more transient guitars than distorted. Again, it's a big square wave, so there's not already, it's very compressed. There's not much dynamics. So I'm not doing any like technical compression to catch things. I'm more just like kind of getting a, getting a tone. I like to use like a bus compressor for it. Like, a, let's see, I'm actually gonna use the SSL bus compressor from Waves. And this is all on the, on the group of all the guitars. So not too much, maybe about 4 dB of gain reduction. I make sure to use the makeup gain to keep it the same volume as it was before. The, honestly, the stock attack and release setting is and the ratio setting are pretty fit for guitars. It's not too short of an attack to where it's cutting out the front, I'm just kind of coloring it a little bit. You can use a mix knob if you add a bunch of guitars in and want to kind of do some parallel compression, but... Adds a little bit of color, adds a little bit of like warmth in the mid range. That's such a that's such a catch all analog word to use, but it really does. And then lastly, what I'll do is I'll do a verb, maybe around twenty ish percent. I'll experiment with the room size. I do know specifically for like shoegazy stuff. There's this room preset, dark vocal room, really washy. That I like to use. While the guitar is playing, you don't hear too much of it, but it does kind of put it in the space, especially when you end the take. So yeah, honestly, that's probably where I would leave it as a guitar tone before. And I think from there, um, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of bass as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go through of my bass tone, which is kind of weird. It's it's hybrid as well, so I'm using that clean DI, which is common for bass tones. But I'm also using a little bit of my guitar amp for some parallel gain, which is a little unusual, but I find it works well for me. So I'll, all right, I'm gonna set this up then for new tracks. We have the same things, guitar DI, and then input one for my amp. But with these, I'm gonna be using them at the same time and make another summing stack with these. The amp will be my like distorted layer. And then the DI will be the main bass tone. And I've been kind of cycling between a couple different plugins lately, but I've mostly been using the two Ampeg, the SVT VR and the SVT3 Pro plugins from Plugin Alliance. Um, I found that the VR is a nice, like kind of warmer vintagey sound and the SVT3 Pro is a little more modern sounding. For this one, I'm gonna use the VR, SVT VR. I like to do for my, let's see here, bass tone. Depends on genre. If I want a really, if I want a really tight tone for like heavier, more surgical rock, I might use like an 1176 with a faster attack. But typically the slower attack and the tube warmth of an LA-2A works really well for me. That sounds great already. But I'll also do. Okay, so now we have like really nice bass tone, very thick, very warm. I want to add a little bit of grit to it. Um, I usually go between the, the Sound Toys Decapitator or I'll use the Fab Filter Saturn. I've been really partial to the Saturn recently because of how easy you can multi band distort. 
So I will, I've talked about using the DI and the amp already as a parallel processing, but I'm parallel processing the parallel process. That's kind of crazy, but I'll grab just the highs and do a little bit of drive. You get a little bit of clickiness out of like the pick attack. I'll tweak this more too after I record the bass part. That's another nice thing about the um, working totally in the box. I guess when you weigh the pros and cons is I can record and then keep tweaking the sound. I'll leave it as just this for now. And I'm going to record both just like we did before. I'll just record real quick. Now we got our bass tracked. So I'm gonna work on the main tone first because this is more of a like accent texture kind of thing. I'm gonna quantize again. With bass, instead of polyphonic, I'll usually do monophonic, sometimes rhythmi rhythmic, but... So now you can kind of see the idea of the parallel processing for the bass. You get your tone that's like the that is like the meat of it. Let's see here, I'm gonna turn off. I'm gonna I usually put a gain plugin on this to control the balance. But you get the ba like bass, like B A S E bass of the tone, the low end here, and then you can sprinkle in some distortion. I'll kind of sculpt it with some EQ. Honestly, I mostly want like this kind of area. Another thing I'll do on the distorted tone because it doesn't have as much low end is I'll slightly widen it. This is kind of similar to the room reverb that I put on the guitars. This like puts it in a space. I'll go. Let's see here. Leave vocal clarity preset usually that is pretty good. A little more detune. Go back here. Focus is your like crossover from mono to stereo. So if I set it around like a hundred ish, so you can hear the difference. If I really exaggerate it, obviously that's not out of tune, but. If I find a balance of that, like it kind of puts the amp in a space. No, I really just sprinkle it in a lot of times through a tone like this, but it gives you the option. If I'm doing something really heavy, I can add a ton of fuzz on it or something. Then I will, I know I'm already compressing the bass itself, like the bass amp, but I'm going to do some bus compression. I like the LA-3A for bass. No real reason. I just kind of like the tone of it. And for this one, it's less like I'm doing subtle glue on these guitars, but I'm doing heavier compression on the bass because I want these two parts to sound like one instrument because it is. And I want to make sure it doesn't feel like two separate things.
Sometimes I'll do a little multiband compression or soothe or something. To, uh, so I want to get a little bit of the low end, like resonant frequencies out. Cause sometimes you hear like a bass guitar and a certain note plays and then it gets way louder than the rest. And I'm kind of already noticing that. So I'm gonna cut that a bit here. See if they have this preset pretty much does the thing. I just want the bass to be a little smoother, a little bit less, like, here we go. A little bit less in your face, but not less felt. I add a little more so to balance it out. And yeah, I feel like that Probably summer, that probably is it for my bass tone. This is kind of a long winded video, so I apologize. Kind of getting back in the swing of getting my points across quickly. But this is generally my process for making guitar or for making a guitar and a bass part. That is the process. This video is more technical than like fun walkthrough, but I feel like it's important because I feel like it's a little more like these bass level things sometimes when people are explaining and making videos kind of skim over it and assume you already know. And I think that there's a lot of subtlety and a lot of little workflow things that can get glossed over that are important. So yeah, this is how I record guitar and bass. I hope you can take info from this and make a cool song with it. Um, if you have any questions, if I went over anything too fast, or you just have something separate that I didn't talk about that you want me to answer, feel free to ask in the comments below. Um, yeah, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. There will be more videos on the way. Thank you so much, and peace out.